NBA 2K6 is a fabulous start on the new consoles. The better graphics and the fluidity of the animation shine and show a glimpse of what the 360 and PS3 are capable of. In gameplay, a change I have to mention is the ISO motion system, which is different to past iterations. You no longer have a turbo button in the traditional sense, instead the right and left triggers serve as aggressive modifiers. And with a nice combination of joystick movements, now you get a big variety of moves you can perform and it's more comfy to do the moves with the new system. Also another great thing in the game is the AI. Players react in a more authentic way, and more famous players react like in real life, like for example Kobe will try to take over games by himself, and other famous players react like their real life counterpart, they react in a specific way different to the other players on the field. In Rust, the franchise mode is better, you get a 24-7 mode where you create your own player and get to the top and get players for to, to form the best team. In rest you get a season mode, tournament and even the street mode which makes the game feel extremely varied. NBA Live 2006 isn't a good start on the new generation consoles. Sure, it has the classic etiquette of being HD, and it does that part right, but at what cost? The frame rate. It is inconsistent and bad. And the animations, even if you can see that they are more numerous, they don't connect right, making the game feel weird in some moments. And another sad part about the game are the game modes. While NBA Live's brother, NBA 2K6, has a lot to offer in game modes, this game has only exhibition matches, a season mode, a creative player mode and an online feature. That's about it, no franchise mode or other stuff. In NBA 2K7 they've made slight tweaks to make the game better. They improved the animations to an insane amount, now almost all players on the field have a specific way to handle the ball. In rest, the ISO motion controls have been further improved, so that you are now able to do more stuff with the joysticks. In rest, you get the many game modes from the previous game. Also a big improvement comes in the 24-7 mode, where they added a story. It takes you around 10 hours to finish this mode alone, and this can give you an idea how much content the game has, how much the game has to offer in gameplay hours. Also, the AI seems a little better in the game compared to 2K6. NBA Live 2007 has more game modes. You can choose from Quick Play, Season, Dynasty Mode, Playoffs, All-Star Weekends, Freestyle Challenges, One-on-Ones, Practice and Slam Dunk Schools. The NBA All-Star Weekend includes the Rookie Challenges, 3-point Shootouts, Slam Dunk Contests and the All-Star Game. In Dynasty mode, aside matches, you do the boss work too, you are also the manager. Also some of the more popular players get superstar abilities, which do exactly what the name says. They get specific power-ups. And one review said that the game has touch passes, but I don't know what they are. And a big perk of the game is that they fixed the frame rate issues present in the previous game. NBA Street Home Court is a flashy game, it doesn't try to be realistic, it tries to be cool, and it gets the job done. The core gameplay is pretty fun, you can do lots of over the top moves, and if you play like me, you are even able to fish bomb opponents. You get two different types of matches in the game. You can play a basic game without tricks and game breakers, or play games where points count only if they're scored with a full trick meter or game breaker. You also get trick battles, a practice mode, or you can choose how you want the match to be by entering a custom game. You can even customize your match. There is even a create a player option in the game. It's pretty bad, but hey, you get one. Anyway, the core gameplay, the matches are great. They play great and they make you feel great. Sure, the gameplay is arcadey. It doesn't try to be a simulation of basketball, so it might not be fit for everyone. 
if you seek realism don't seek it in this game but if you want to feel awesome and want a game that is very easy to pick up and satisfying to play then this game is definitely for you NBA Live 2008 brings some novelties. Right from the start of a match you'll notice the different camera angles, and the controls feel better. They don't seem that much changed, but they feel more responsive, or maybe it's just the smoothness of the game. The superstar moves are gone, but the players still differentiate themselves drastically when you look at the stats of each player. Each one has his playstyle nicely tweaked to imitate the playstyle from the real life counterpart. Also the game brings some nice slam dunk contests and 3 point shootouts. You can also participate in the rookie challenges as well as the FIBA tournament. In NBA 2K8 they added slam dunk contests, but the story you had in the previous game, the 10 hour long story is gone and you don't get another one instead. But you get slam dunk contests which is a mini game and aside of the story that is gone and the slam dunk contest which is a cool new feature you also get new animations that make the game more believable more signature moves meaning that more characters are animated to act just like their real life counterpart in rest the ai is tougher and the game looks more polished In NBA Bowler's Chosen One, you create a bowler and then do Chosen One stuff, beat everyone up, including the final boss. As you can see from the video, the game is about flashy moves and street basketball. You need style in this game. The story consists of 6 chapters and you won't play just one on one but two on two, cutthroat and other moves. You'll even get challenges like no fouls or finishing the match in a certain fashion. Also the game feels sometimes like a fighting game especially during the quick time events during show-offs and also you get three tiers of super moves super moves are like ultimate attacks in fighting games nba 2k9 is solid but it doesn't bring anything new aside the roster updates and the ability to play 5 on 5 online and of course the menu pictures but in rest i will need to be incredibly nitpicking to spot differences. Gameplay wise I mean, because graphically you can clearly see the boost. NBA Live 2009 brings the dynamic DNA feature, which means that player stats are updated automatically to fit their real life counterpart as long as you have internet connection. The feature sounds cool, but doesn't impact the gameplay that much. Also you have the ability to call plays by pressing L2. In Rust, it's as solid as the others, having all the game modes till now. It still has to improve on the AI part though, but in Rust, it's as solid as ever. NB Live 10 brings the dynamic DNA feature, in which player attributes are updated daily to reflect real world changes. The feature was present in the other one too, in Live 2009. But here, it's more apparent, and now the updates were more constant, and you can see slight changes in the stats in gameplay. Even the other games had something like this, by having personalized stats for each player. But here the stats of the players were updated constantly, provided you had internet connection. NBA 2K10 Draft Combined is actually a demo of 2K10. It was released before the game to showcase especially the character creation tools. You get 300 customization options that include dunking, shooting and dribbling styles. And the options are very detailed compared to the other games. And you can participate in some training challenges after you've created your player. NBA 2K10 brings a new mode, the My Player mode where you create your own character and get to become a legend. This mode still has to improve in some aspects, like for example in the grading system, but it's a good start. 
And another aspect where the game needs improvement is in the performance department. The game has frequent bugs and has a choppy frame rate on too many occasions. NBA Unrivaled feels more like a mini game than an actual game. You have three game modes, quick play, challenge and online matches. And no matter in which one you enter, you just play matches. Even the challenge mode consists of a list of teams you have to beat. The animations are horrible, as you can see from the video, and the game is full of bugs and glitches. Don't play the game, it, it shouldn't exist. NBA 2K11 is fantastic, it's amazing, the controls have been made more responsive and they cleared almost 99% of the bugs. Also the game features Michael Jordan and you can replay some of the best moments in basketball with him. In Rust, the franchise mode is more detailed and you get everything the other games had, plus the Michael Jordan story matches, the challenges. So this game is just like a love letter for the fans. And it's a big jump in improvement from 2K10 to 2K11. NBA Jam was intended to be released on the PS3 and 360 in a bundle along with NBA Elite 11. But since Elite 11 got cancelled, NBA Jam was released as a standalone. The game will put you into 2 on 2 matches, with power ups, funny commentary and fast paced action. You can also play boss battle matches, which are 1 on 1, or get into challenges. The number of playable characters is good, and I like the variety. You can even pick up US presidents as playable characters. And also, you get a mode where the team that destroys the basket wins. It's an awesome game, and it becomes even more awesome if you play it with a friend. NBA 2K12 is improved in almost every aspect. If you have 2K11 and think that this game has just slight changes, well, those changes really make the experience significantly better. First off, the presentation is better. The menus are better and faster and easier to browse, the crowds are better and react more realistic, the controls are better with the new stick shooting mechanics. A big downside in the game is that the franchise mode is now only online and you could compete with friends and yeah it's a nice feature. It was great back then but playing it now in 2020 the online franchise mode isn't as great of a feature anymore. But even if the franchise mode is online, NBA Greatest isn't. Remember how in the previous game you had the Jordan challenges? Well, now you don't play only as Michael Jordan, but with 14 others. And the challenges are more fun than in 2K11. And on PS3, you even have PS Move controls. The controls didn't feel that great, but hey, it's something. Also, 2K12 has a DLC, The Legends Showcase which is this shell-shaded beast. You play the entire DLC in Times Square in front of a crowd. The DLC focuses on some of NBA's best players from the last 40 years or so. And it brings new game modes too, like teammate challenges where you pick up two famous superstars and play a 2 on 2 with another pair of famous superstars, the 3 on 3 era challenges where 3 man teams from each decade compete to figure out which era is the greatest, you also get games like horse and 21 round down the batch, it's a great DLC. NBA Jam on Fire Edition is the same game but improved. If you were to choose between NBA Jam and NBA Jam On Fire, always choose the On Fire edition. It has more content and new stuff, you also get more flashy moves you can perform. Now the game has Team Fire, which means that now not only one player catches fire, but his teammate too, resulting in some seconds of invincibility for the team on fire. And overall, there are new and more moves, and a lot of unlockables. It's like the Game of the Year edition of NBA Jam. NBA Baller Beats is a Kinect game. The game was sold with a basketball, but since I've got the game used, I don't have the original ball. The game teaches you how to do basketball moves by imitating the screen. You can use any basketball you want. It's like some sort of Just Dance type of game, but with a basketball. 
and you, you end up doing all sorts of moves. If it sounds interesting to you, try it out. And the reason why I used a GameSpot footage for a game I already have in my Xbox is because I live in a block of flats and playing this game means bouncing a ball on the ceiling of my downstairs neighbors. And ju just imagine having a neighbor who, who, who plays basketball inside. NBA 2K13 is the same solid experience. But some of the design choices are weird. You can play as Justin Bieber for example. I don't know what Justin Bieber has to do with basketball and why he's a playable character and why his team is better than most teams in the game. I mean why make him a playable character instead of Obama and the president gang like in NBA Jam that in my opinion is cooler. But yeah, personal opinions aside, when I googled why Justin Bieber got in the game, I found this. It would appear that NBA 2K13, executive producer Sean Jay-Z Carter Knowles, saw fit in his artistic vision to include the international sensation in the game, but not in the game's soundtrack. Clever. And the celebrity team, as I said, has better stats than many teams in the game. but. Uh, also, you have the option to create your own shoe in the game. In Rust, aside of the presentation choices, there is a new control scheme. The controls are some sort of hybrid within the Live series and the 2K series. In short, you can make dribbles with the right stick. In Rust, it, as I said, it's the same solid experience, aside of the design choices and the new controls. NBA 2K14 brings new the LeBron path to greatness mode, where you don't replay historic moments like in the Jordan challenges in 2K11, but instead play an hypothetical future of LeBron. It's similar to the My Player game mode, but your player isn't custom made, it's LeBron James. In rest, it's the same solid game you usually get each year. The improvements in 2K15 are more subtle, but they are still present. For example, in the My Coach game mode, you have more options than before. You have a new shooting meter, but overall the changes don't feel that big. Though one mode feels new, the My Career mode, because it's a different story from past years. It's a new plot, you already know the plot, that you become a champ, but still, the dialogues and characters and cutscenes are new. So it, it, it's nice, I always liked that some NBA games had stories with dialogues and cutscenes and stuff like that. I, I like it, I, I like the feature. And it's as good as always in this game. NBA 2K16 brings the 2K battles, which are an imitation of the Play Now feature on the new generation consoles. And the feature is dead. It was under maintenance when the game came out and nowadays the servers still are under problems, so the only new feature is present only on paper, because it didn't work at first and now it doesn't work either, it's, it's only on paper. In rest the game is pretty much like last year, sure many characters have new models. There is a new commentary in the background and other slight visual changes are present, but gameplay wise I mean, it's pretty much the same game. NBA 2K17 doesn't bring anything new, and same goes for 2K18. They were made only because there was still demand for them. Even in 2017, some people still wanted to play NBA on their 360s and PS3s. Probably they didn't make the jump from PS3 and uh, PS4. And EA, even if they ported the games, didn't improve the games. But truth is that they reached their peak on the 360 and PS3. I mean, they were beasts right from the start and pushed the consoles to their limits. And even if 2K17 and 2K18 don't bring anything new on the table in gameplay, they are still solid basketball experiences. I mean, if you don't know the history of the 2K series, and you played random 2K titles, or if you've never played a 2K game, even if you pick up this two, they will still be amazing games. 
The only reason why people consider them worse or well less nice than others to use more gentle terms is because by comparison with the previous games that all brought big improvements from one title to the other, these two aren't distinct from the others aside of the packaging, but they are still great games. Ok so this was the video, if you liked it please hit the like button and subscribe, if you want to support me in my pursuit to review as many video games as possible, click the join button and choose one of the perks, if you want you can follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord, I've left the links to those in the video description and if you want to see another video of mine just wait till I stop talking and there will be thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching!